So far we have only spoken about electrochemical cells in which the reactants and products are both at standard state conditions. This means when I showed you the relationship between the concentration of reactants and products and the electrochemical cells cell voltage, I did this on the standard state conditions. However, most reactions do not occur on the standard state conditions. This means we must revisit the topic of the relationship between the concentrations and the cell voltage and adjust it for non-standard state conditions. So to begin, let's first talk about standard state conditions. So standard state conditions simply mean a concentration of one molar and a pressure of one bar. And the temperature could be anything. Normally, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or 298 degrees Kelvin, but it could really be anything. So, in a, in a previous lecture, we saw that the relationship between equilibrium constant K on the standard conditions is the following. Log of base 10 of K is equal to number of moles of electrons and times our cell voltage on the standard state conditions divided by 0 0.0592. Now this guy is at equilibrium, is when our reaction is at equilibrium. And if our reaction has reactants A and B and C and D which are all in an aqueous state, then our equilibrium constant expression is the following. It's K equals the ratio of the concentration of products divided by the ratio of the concentration of reactants. Now to begin our process of adjusting for the new relationship between the concentration and the cell potential, let's look at Gibbs free energy. Now under non-standard state conditions, we can make an adjustment to Gibbs free energy formula. Remember, before on the standard state conditions, our formula was the following. It was simply Gibbs free energy or a change in Gibbs free energy and on the standard state conditions is equal to negative of this guy. But now we are not on the standard state conditions and we make, must make that adjustment. So the adjustment is the following. Now this guy is now our term used to adjust for non-equilibrium and non-standard state conditions. Now this is still our free energy at equilibrium for standard state conditions and this is the actual free energy at some point in our reaction. Now let's look at this reaction. Suppose we had some reaction that wasn't at standard state condition and that wasn't at equilibrium. So our reactant A was in aqueous state, reactant B was in aqueous state, our product C was also in aqueous state and our product D was also in aqueous state. Now this Q has the same meaning as this K. It's also a constant and we can use or develop an expression for this reaction for this Q in the same way that we did here. And here it is. So Q is equal to the product of the concentrations of the products divided by the product of the concentrations of reactants. Now what happens when these guys begin reacting forming C and D? Well the concentration of C and D begins to increase while the concentration of A and B begins to decrease. And so our top begins to increase and bottom begins to increase. So our Q becomes larger. But notice that according to Le Chatelier principle, if our concentration of products begin to increase, what will tend to happen? Well, if we have more of this guy, equilibrium will slowly begin to shift to the left. This is according to Le Chatelier principle. Now, what this equation does is it agrees with uh, Le Chatelier principle with this idea that if we have more products, our equilibrium will shift this way. Now, let's see how exactly it agrees. Well, let's look. This is our uh, change in Gibbs free energy at equilibrium, at standard state conditions. And whenever it's negative, that means our reaction is product favored, right? It's spontaneous at those conditions. So if this is a negative term, and this is a positive term, then together they will be less negative and more positive. So this term adjusts for Le Chatelier's principle. Because look, if our Q begins to increase when, we, when more products are formed, that means Q is, say, bigger than 1. 
And whenever we take the natural log of any number that's bigger than 1, we get a positive number. So this whole thing is a positive number because r is positive, it's a constant, and t is positive, it's a temperature. So this guy will be positive, right? That means our equilibrium, uh, some negative number plus a positive number, will make a more positive number. So Le Chatelier's principle says that when we, we, uh, when we form more products, our reaction will shift to the left. That's exactly what this guy says uh, as well. If this is some negative number and you add a positive number to it, we're going to get a more positive result, more positive free energy. And wh what does Gibbs free energy tell us when it's positive? It tells us our reaction is react in favor. So this is a equation for Gibbs free energy under non-standard state conditions. So now we can use this formula and in part C we can we can plug things in. Let's look. So in another lecture we saw that changing Gibbs free energy under standard state conditions is equal to negative uh, number of moles and of uh, electrons times our Faraday's constant times cell voltage. Well we can write the same equation for non-standard state conditions, except now we're not using that little dot because now we're not at standard state conditions. So now let's plug these guys in into this formula and this is what we get. Well, we plug this guy in into this guy here and this guy into this guy here and we get the following. Negative n times Faraday's constant times E at non-standard state conditions equals the same thing on the standard state conditions, which is our um, standard state gives free energy plus this constant here. 